Now, I thought we'd start, uh, both of us probably, I'll say, five, ten years ago, never thought that uh, we'd have this uh, career in uh, alt-media. There, For each of us, there was always... <laughs> A, a moment uh, where you know we felt you know compelled to to enter this uh, scene um, you I've seen you on your show call it a red pill moment so uh, I'll ask you to explain <laughs> what's yours oh gosh how do we do this um, without implicating other people for me I grew up an arch conservative okay I um, uh, from 2001 I, I was doing a uh, Straight out of school, I was doing a liberal uh, or advanced diploma in liberal arts at the time, um, and 9/11 happened, and so it was one of those things that I bought the narrative. I wrote way too many column inches to uh, to be proud of supporting the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq after that, and um, I was on that road for for a good five years until uh, one of my sources basically said, and then another within the space of three months, we're not helping you anymore. Um, uh, they were deep sources in the US, and uh, the, and I didn't understand why. They said, unless you get over this disnified fairy tale of, uh, of what you think about this war, um, we can't help you. Uh, within the week, I had a couple of hundred pages dropped into a, a secure Dropbox, and um, the whole rug had been ripped out from under me. I realized... Um, well, I went into depression for about six months, and I realized that if I was wrong about that, I was wrong about so many more things. You know, the way I thought about other people, the way I thought about, about other nations, um, and you know, I had avoided tinfoil hat conspiracy theories like the plague. You know, my whole life, like I really hated the idea of uh, anybody questioning the mainstream media narrative because it was so good and virtuous and right. Um, but yeah, look between that time um the, you know i won't say i swung hard left but i i started seeing the other side of things you know um so from bolt to pilger in a sense um that red pill moment just as they do it, it, it just uh you you become more open to more things after you get over the the um life destroying depression of the whole thing and ron paul literally was running up to that 2008 campaign and then you know subsequently the 2012 one and I got exposed to a whole new way of thinking um libertarianism that sort of Ron Paul libertarianism and um yeah look man it's been a journey and it's um I, I guess the first red pill is just to realize that uh, we know nothing <laughs> unless we really research the crap out of it and um it's so easy to pat people on the back it's so easy to get inside your own little echo chamber and think that everybody else has the answers and you just have to rely on them until you realize you start digging, you realize most people are repeating slogans. And yeah, 2006 was 2006 was the time I was five years late to the party, realizing, well, or three years in the case of Iraq, uh, that it wasn't as virtuous as, uh, as I believed it was. And I've probably swallowed a good 120 tablets of uh, or red pills in the, <laughs> in that time so yeah uh, it's not easy to uh be in this uh, uh alt media scene because you know you do lose a uh, you know a lot of friendships you're you know saying uh unpopular things but it's just it's uh, I, I, maybe it's a curse in a way that we're just driven to uh, pursue this because you know we do see that you know there's issues that need to be discussed Mm. Yeah, look, I, it's funny because like we're talking about liberal arts and I was reflecting on this a little while ago. Um, I was in a, you know, a liberal arts program, okay? And even then there was obviously this staunch, how do we put it, um, rebelliousness to being the only hard conservative in, in a bunch of like real rabid lefties, you know? Um, and and it, I, I think that streak has always run through what I've done. I'm not so much afraid to, I hate losing friends, but I'm not so f afraid to sort of preach what I believe and, 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 and speak the truth as I see it. Um, I think the red pill moment though, that happens, um, it takes away your security blanket in a sense. It, it, it really makes you feel, um, 
so insecure and lied to and and betrayed and and all of that and i've seen red pill moments destroy people like i've seen them you know some people can handle them some people can't and it's not about strength or makeup i don't think but i think it's it is quite catastrophic and it can lead to um severe depression um when something that you, you, you you'll see it with people who join protestantism or the catholic church or something like that after having like their whole family having been in one or the other and um you know that sense of being lied to your whole life um is 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 hard and it makes you suspicious and it makes you sad and and yeah look it's it's about how you use it so yeah i i think yeah look continue with your questions but i really do think that um australia is way behind the eight ball on alt media so you said 10 years ago you know who would have thought we'd be doing this um anybody who's been observing geopolitics in in you know this last decade or more has seen a huge awakening around you know thanks to the internet and thanks to uh alt providers for example uh giving news and information that otherwise would not have been accessible to the general public and it has had significant change on populations for me it took me 2 years to pull my finger out um because i quite literally um was hoping somebody else would would come along and do it for me <laughs> um and we are in australia so far behind the eight ball when it comes to this sort of thing so yeah look if the best we can do is inspire half a dozen other far more articulate intelligent people to take up the torch that's okay with me now your background's in uh, music and people yes. are watching the video can see the keyboard in the background uh, now, uh, okay. previously on this show, I've interviewed the, the Rational Rise and James yep. Fox Higgins and Rob McMullen. They're both musicians. Mm -hmm. I've wondered, is there a you know, conservative libertarian streak in the, the music industry that's just hidden? Um, that's a, that would be a big call for me to make. But one thing I have seen, the awakening from the far, far left to the far right, I, I've seen a lot, and there are quite a few people. I was talking to a gentleman, a very well-known uh, entertainer recently, who I won't out on the show, but um, he was—he's just recently been exposed to Milo Yiannopoulos and Dr. Jordan Peterson. And as a hard lefty, it's been a real challenge for him. And we spent forever talking about that process of of um, of recognizing the substructure of Western civilization was based on something. And it's been undone very, very quickly. And um, you know, there, there, there's a, another gentleman I, who, who I won't, who we just did a festival with recently. And you know, I joked about Happy Invasion Day because he was playing an Australia Day show that we were doing. And um, and he started, don't start with that shit. And I realised very quickly how much of a conservative streak he sort of had in him. Um, uh, and nobody would know because they don't advertise it. And I, you know. I can say also that there are, you know, you and I disagree on the same-sex marriage thing, but um, when I was sort of doing interviews on the for the no campaign, like why I was voting no um, and exploring that subject, I have a lot of friends in the industry, for example, who s voted yes straight away. I mean, it, as soon as the ballot paper came in because that's what we're supposed to do. And as the campaign went on, um, they were telling me, oh, my gosh, these – radical LGBTQI Marxist collective people are scary. Uh, I think we made a mistake, you know. So there is something about the arts that is that is very different to just your normal university degree. In that it, I was asked on a panel recently, like, why, of all the things I've done in life, why so much time in music? And I think it's just the bloody self-determination of the thing. And, and so I, I do think we will see a lot more artists waking up um, and hopefully speaking up, but as you know, like you and I can do this. Um, I, I can lose some endorsements. I can lose all that sort of stuff. That's fine. Um, some people out there, are their whole bread and butter relies on towing a certain line and a certain way of being. And if they were to do today, what we're doing today, um, it would be a career ender. Uh, and they would have the whole power of the mainstream media basically naming and shaming them. So um, I think it's going to take a little bit more of this. I, you know, I don't think the the boldness of 
institutions is necessarily going to change overnight in a country like Australia. I think, sadly, we're probably going to be relying on the next generation. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I do know conservatives in the industry. Um, some of them you'll see they'll out themselves on Facebook. But generally, it's private. It's private, much like the rest of the community, I guess. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.